All right, so, so tell me briefly about your background. Um, what first interested you in Pilates? Wow, okay, so I am from a fitness background. I'm also from a dance background, but it was fitness that led me to Pilates as a professional. My first club that I, a studio, gym, that I worked as wanted to have Pilates mat instruction and they knew I did Pilates. So they sent me for my first training um, in New York City. And from there, it just snowballed on and on and on. And long story short, no one, you know, you never know what opportunities are. And I'm always like, guys, always look and, and think about that. So I never thought that being a Pilates professional would take me from running a program in a gym to a studio owner, to being a master trainer for a company that was owned by three women, to running one of the largest companies in the Pilates industry as their operations manager and faculty, and, and also now being the president of the Pilates Method Alliance. So it's been my, a journey. It has been a full on journey. So I always tell everybody, don't, don't think it's just something where you're always gonna be in a studio every day and there's nothing wrong with that, but there's so many opportunities. I mean, my first studio, 99% of my business were football players, they were men. And it was rare to see women and to have that conversation now where people are talking about size, these guys were huge and the equipment, they couldn't fit a reformer. So I, a lot of the work we did was on Wonder Chairs and Cadillacs because they were just too big to get on a reformer. You adapted. That actually leads me nicely into that next into my next question for you. Um, when we talk about inclusivity, what do you believe inclusivity means for the Pilates industry? So you know, it, it started out to be more about race, but when we really think about wellness, wellness doesn't stop at a race. It doesn't stop at a sexual identification or orientation. It, it, it goes beyond that. And when we think about the industry wanting to expand and to grow, we really have to think about size and what that, and, and not size in a negative context, because we're all beautiful no matter what our shape, sizes, and colors are. And size does not mean that you're not able to move. It doesn't mean that you're not healthy. It's just the size that the creator has placed you in. And we need to honor that. And as the industry, we need to honor that and create spaces where people feel comfortable in their own bodies to exercise. Whether that, and, no matter the size of that body, no matter the color of that body, no matter the ethnicity of that body, no matter- No what matter what that is. wrapping is, they yeah. need to feel comfortable in that, in a space to do that. Right. You know, it's funny. I feel like I, even in my own company, when I talk about it, I wish we had it. Um, there's a gym called Planet Fitness mm. and it's called the No Judgment Zone. And I really wish Pilates- would take that to heart and make it a no judgment zone. Maybe studios can have no judgment zones in their windows and, you know, adopt, I think that would be adopted yeah. as a core value. And I think it would be great because if they did one, it would, it would trickle. I think it trickles down and up, yeah. you know, I think yeah. instructors need, would need also to kind of address their biases about size and not automatically, um, discriminate or start putting people in different silos because of their sizes. But also, I think it would also help people that are training to be a professional in this industry. Hmm. Um, when, I, when, when I talked about, you know, having the sign on the door it reminded me of the other question I wanted to ask you, and it's how you, how you believe Pilates teachers or studios can create these more inclusive spaces. What are, you know, what would you say are the top three things that they could do to, to create spaces that are more inclusive, inclusive of everyone? I think the first thing is um, hiring practices. People want to see themselves. I mean, I, I can only speak from examples because I, I live in the studio or I used to be in the studio, I'm, I'm back. But 
the most powerful thing I've heard over the last year that I've started teaching more frequently is, oh my God, I feel so at home because you look like me. Yeah. Representation, Representation matters. It matters. Yeah. And, you know, I've had instructors who were very reluctant to even apply to teach at my studio because they were not, they, they didn't feel like they fitted in the mold. Yeah. And I'm like, are you kidding? Do you know the body? Do you know how to do, do you know, do you have empathy? Do you have compassion? Do you know Pilates? That's the mold you need to fit in. Mm -hmm. It's not a size mold. It's not a color mold. It's this and this. That's what you need. Yeah. And I think studio owners and professionals need to take that into account. Representation means so much. I so had one hiring. young lady. Yeah. And it starts there because clients are going to gravitate to what they feel comfortable, but they're going to gravitate to someone that can understand them and mm -hmm. someone that is not in that body is not going to understand the same thing as someone who is someone who's who's successful can do the movements and and still be in a different size body is going to have more compassion for somebody that is like that and say you can do this or i know how to adjust the movement so it's it's comfortable for you or i know how to move the reformer so it works for you i know i know because i am that person yeah. And if you don't know, you can't, you can't, no matter how much you can't say it, I can't, you can't work with a woman that's pregnant. If you've never been pregnant, you don't understand what that feels like. But you know what? You can have empathy. I mean, you worked with football mm -hmm. players. Had you ever been a football player? You knew they weren't fitting on the reformer, right? So I think there's also, don't you think there's also a degree of just empathy and understanding? Yeah, that's what I mean. It comes from the, here. Yeah, yeah. It right. comes from, it's, it's not just here, but it's here. And I think, you know, sometimes we're so wrapped up in this. If you, if you work with people that have more of this, I think that's another way to, to create that space. Right. Um, and so hiring practices, what would be, what would be another way that, that, you know, a studio or a teacher, um, even if they work out of their home or that, you know, I, I think there's such tremendous opportunity to expand your client mm -hmm. base, um, so what, what's another, um, another way that, that you believe they can create more inclusive spaces? Marketing, intentional marketing. Mm -hmm. I, 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 again, a lot of it is intentional. I think the marketing that people perceive that people want to see is not necessarily the marketing that's reaching the messaging to the people that need it or that would like to be a part of it. So I think really looking at representation in your marketing, what is that, what does that look like? What is the vibe? You know, what is, what is the message you're communicating? Is it really about a certain body type? And in my mind, it's not, it's about wellness. I want to see that the, the thing about Pilates is that Pilates helps you live a better life. It helps you do better in everything. It helps you sit at your desk longer. It helps you drive your bus longer. It helps you teach, be a teacher in a school longer because it gives you that, that support for your body. It helps you align it. That's the messaging. Yeah. I'm not, I, if you're, if you're trying to say, oh, we're going to get into a bikini or this is going to help you lose 20 pounds. That's not, that's not healthy. That's not the messaging that needs to be intentionalized when they want to broaden their market or make it welcoming towards people. That's interesting. So the messaging should be, you know, could be more broadly focused on, on functional health, mm -hmm. on wellness. And yeah, love that. Yeah. You know, you want to work with your grandkids. I know people that are, you know, 80 something years old and they're like, you know, from Pilates, I can now get on the ground and get up with my kids and, and do and enjoy. It's a quality of life that we're yeah. doing. I love those stories, too. People have transformed their lives, you know, with Pilates. Um, anything else? Hiring, intentional marketing, anything else? I think those are big ones. They're and really I, big, but I think conversations. Mm -hmm. I, I think having you know, when you meet with your team, having these conversations, because I think it may be in the back of their mind, or maybe it's a seed, or maybe it's not even a seed, and you need to plant this information in your current team so they also understand and are intentional in their behavior. 
Yeah. And, and if it is truly a desire, then planting that seed also signals to them that it's a, it's a value that you mm-hmm. have um, and that you're going to be more intentional about uh, living Across out that board. value. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you got to get everybody to buy into it. So, you know, communicating that to your team and having those conversations also helps. And, you know, also speaking to people that are not coming to your studio. Mm hmm. Find out, you know. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Find out. You just keep giving me such nice segues into my next question. (laughs) Because I was going to ask you, you know, what's the what's the ideal way to expose new audiences to Pilates? You know, and that's talking to the folks who aren't there. Like, how do you do that in a real and tangible way? I mean, as a communications person, I have some ideas about it, but you're the Pilates expert. I want to know. Yeah, but I'm not a communications person, so I don't know if my ideas are going to work. Um, I know I'm trying. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. What are you, and what are you doing? What are you doing specifically to try to in- engage new audiences? So um, it's interesting because I can, I've been consulting other studios. I haven't quite gotten my studio because I'm not, I don't, that's not my full-time gig. I'm trying to guide other people, but things that I suggest is going to um, open houses. There are a lot of places like, um, you know, I want to say religious church, you know, churches, your religious environments, going there and talking about it. They all, all churches and um, are talking about wellness and mm-hmm. what does it look like? I know that, you know, there's several around me that do, that have started walking clubs and started, you know, different things. So why not go and talk to these people about Pilates? You know, yeah. they may not even, they may not even know it, or they may think they know it. Right, and right. and offer them a little, you know, as a little peek into what it's like. Yeah. Um, find mm-hmm. out, you know, if they know Pilates, find out why they haven't started it. You know, mm-hmm. is it that they feel like the studio isn't welcoming or they don't feel like they belong? You know, I have clients who used to say, well, I don't, I want to join, but I have to get in shape. I'm like, that's like saying you got to get in shape to go to the gym. That's not why you join the gym. Yeah, you know, right. so it's those type of things that would kind of like have to, and that connects out. directly to those images that they're probably seeing of people who are doing. Yeah, it, yeah. it does. Yeah. You know, um, starting with the youth, there's boys and girls clubs all around the world. You know, going there and talking to them is a career option, but also teaching them about it. Joseph wanted it to be part of the gym. He wanted kids to do it. And, you know, with all of our programs being cut, it's a great way to get kids involved again. And through them, they'll get their parents, Yeah, you know? Yeah, partnerships um, with boys and girls club, clubs and other nonprofit organizations that serve um, children or, you know, I'm thinking of, there are a number of different fitness related There are many communities. Yeah, yeah. Community-based yeah, organizations. Yeah. Well, um, out. So are, do you have any final thoughts on, uh, you know, inclusivity? And, you know, I, I love what I heard um, a woman say at a de had nothing to do with Pilates. It was in my industry and in PR about, you know, where we start um, because, there's, you know, representation is an issue across every industry. And, um, you know, she said that she thinks it's just so important just that we just start with respect. Like you were saying, mm-hmm. like the heart, just respecting other people and what they can bring to the table is a, is a huge start. So no matter, you know, what that body looks like, what that person looks like, um, just a basic respect for humanity and what, what you have to offer them as, as your, with, through your gift as a Pilates teacher, you know? Any final thoughts? I'm like, totally, I could talk about this whole day, but. <laughs> Me too, I could, I could go on and on and on. And I was like, I wanna keep it short, give you enough things to pull from. But at the same time, that's not like I'm just, ugh. But, you know, I think the, any, anything worthwhile starts with courage. It starts with respect, mm-hmm. but it also starts with courage. Mm-hmm. I think people are so, especially in today's age, everybody's so afraid that they're going to hurt somebody's feelings or, you know, say the wrong thing. And I've sat on many conversations about um, sexual sexual orientation identification. And they were like, just ask. If you don't know what to say, ask me what you, what I want and what, what you want, what I want, you know? And I think that takes courage. Yeah. 
I agree. And that once we get past that, that courage and, and then continue the conversation, that's when things happen. That's when change happens. But right now, everybody sits back and they're like, oh, I don't want to offend this one. I don't want to do that. Yeah. We're never going to grow. We yeah. have to be the ones to take that step, to take that leap. And, you know, I, I work, I live in faith. So I believe if I step out on faith, it's going to happen. Right. And right. if I do it with a good heart, it's going to even be even more. Even better. And I just think people should just do the same thing. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate this. Um, this has been great. Thank you, Stella. Thank you.